This has been my family's land for generations. I'm out there walking on the land. I try to do it every morning. My mind is wandering. I'm watching the dogs. And I feel so connected. I think about my grandfather and his connection to the land. Ranching is hard work. This land is hard. It's not something that I have found the next generation wants. I wanted to get away. I wanted to leave this place, and I did, and I saw the world, and I came back, and I'm happy I did. I didn't come back here to get rich. I knew that it was a hard scrabble living here. I came back to get to know the land. I want to be able to teach people to connect to the wild. The valley is growing very fast rates. We're facing the pressure to subdivide. I mean, that's where the money is. At the same time, the region's getting hotter and the droughts are lasting a lot longer. All of this makes for a devastating effect on our ecosystem. The thorn forest, as well as all the different ecological reasons in the Rio Grande Valley, it's hurting from this drought and it worries me and it saddens me. Are the plants and animals in this area going to be able to withstand this climate change we're having? Because of land conversion over the past century, the Rio Grande Valley has less than 10% of its native forests left. Native animals dependent on these forests are running out of space to live. And in the future, many plants won't be able to survive where they currently grow. Hello. Hi, Betty. Welcome. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service started reforesting about 40 years ago. We've already protected so many important places, but because drought has become more of a threat, we need to shift the way we think about conservation. American forest strategy is about giving nature a leg up. Plant diversity is a cornerstone of our drought resilience work. We partner with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to collect seeds from across the Rio Grande Valley. And this species diversity is represented in the restoration sites. Some of these plants may have genes that allow them to better handle high heat or extreme drought. In a single restoration, we plant over 30 species. We plant more densely to create habitat more quickly for dependent species, but also to keep the invasives at bay. Shelter tubes are also important because they protect seedlings from herbivores early on in their growth and they also provide seedlings with adequate soil moisture. Right now, our strategy is in its pilot phase. Scaling it up is going to be a group effort. Agencies, private landowners, universities, and groups like American Forests will all need to work together. In the years to come, we recognize that we will have to adapt our strategy as the climate changes. This is a dynamic process. I can see a time when land restoration is as vital to our economy as urbanizing. It's hard to get your hands around what the future will bring. These new planting methods may be the answer. They're incredibly promising for restoring our forests. And so planting a tree today is gonna ensure that future generations get to see the wildness that I have seen.